So, in this lecture we discuss undecidability. We are curious to know that given any problem whether the problem can be solved or cannot be solved at all. So, if the problem is solved we say that it is decidable otherwise it is not decidable that means undecidable. So, we have seen that some problem already seen that there are some problems which are decidable and it was shown by giving Turing machines which holds on every input to decide the corresponding language. That means, there is a decider Turing machine to accept the corresponding language. So, for every problem we will have the corresponding language and if that language can be decided by a Turing machine then we say that the problem is solvable or decidable. So, today we will see undecidability. Now, a problem P is said to be unsolvable if there is no algorithm for P that means, the language of P that is the language of P is undecidable the corresponding language, language for a problem P which we denote like this in bracket angular bracket is undecidable. That means, there is no Turing machine that holds on any input accepting P that is what we say. Now, showing that a problem is decidable we can construct a Turing machine that is a decider to decide that language, but in to show that a problem is undecidable we should show that there is no Turing machine which can decide the corresponding language. So, constructing a Turing machine which is a decider for a given language may be easy in some cases, but showing that no such Turing machine exists for a given language is not that easy. Therefore, given a problem to show that it is undecidable, it may not be very easy to show that the problem is undecidable. Now, there are another way to show that suppose that we have a problem already we have shown it to be undecidable, then there is a way to prove that some other problem is undecidable by using a tool by wh which basically translates from one problem to another and that is what is said to be reducibility. Now, reducibility use is used to prove that if one problem is undecidable then some other problem can also be uh, is also undecidable. Similarly, if some problem is decidable then some other problems is also decidable. So, let us formally define reducibility. Say L 1 is a language and L 2 is a language. So, L 1 is a subset of sigma star, sigma 1 star and L 2 is a subset of sigma 2, two star. So, the L 1 and L 2 these two are two languages. We say that L 1 is reducible to L 2 and written as L 1 reduces to L 2. We use this less than equal to sign to indicate that. So, we say that L 1 is reducible to L 2. If there is a compatible function f from sigma 1 star to sigma, sigma 2 star such that for any string x any string x belongs to L, L 1 if and only if f x belongs to L 2. That means, since we say that there is function is computable that means, there is a Turing machine say m f that takes any string x that belongs to belong to sigma 1 star as input and it translates it by means of f that means f of x to a string 
that belongs to L 2. So, if x belongs to L sigma 1 star if x belongs to L 1 then f x belongs to L 2. Similarly, if x does not belong to L 1 then f x does not belong to L 2. So, that is what the commutative function does. So, if satisfies that then we say that L 1 is reducible to L 2 via this function commutative function f. Now, once we have this from this we can show that suppose L 1 is reducible to L 2 and L 2 is decidable then we can show that L 1 is also decidable. So, we can prove it by this since L 2 is decidable there must be an algorithm say M 2 that decides L 2 that is our assumption. Now, L 1 reduces to L 2 since L 1 reduces to L 2 there is a computable function say f such that x belongs to L 1 if and only if f x belongs to L 2. Say m f with a Turing machine that computes f as we have given earlier there must be a Turing machine to compute this function f say m f is the function. Now, we will have m 1 the Turing machine which is a composition of m f and the algorithm m 2. So, m 2 is a Turing machine it is an algorithm beside similarly m f is a Turing machine which, compu which computes a function f. So, m f composition m 2 is the algorithm m 1. Now, we saw that m 1 is basically an algorithm for l 1 that means, l 1 is also decidable that is what we want to show. So, how to show that m 1 is an algorithm that decides l 1. Now, we have m 2 it takes some input and answers yes or no. If answers yes if that input belongs to L of m 2 if it does not belong to L of m 2 it says no and m f computes the function f it takes an input x and it outputs f x. So, if x belongs to L 1 then f x belongs to L 2 if x does not belong to L 1 f x does not belong to L 2. Now, we have this composition of these two, two Turing machine we just combine these two Turing machine m, m, m f m and m 2 to have m 1. So, this m 1 takes any input x belong to sigma 1 star. So, here we use the Turing machine m f to compute f x and gives f x input to m 2. Now, since m 2 will always say either yes or no. So, whenever m 2 says yes m 1 also says yes whenever m 2 says no m 1 also says no. So, therefore, given any string x belong to sigma 1 star m 2 always will say yes or no therefore, m 1 also says yes or no and whenever it says yes. So, if x belongs to L 1 then f x belongs to L 2 and then m 1 outputs always yes that is the because since f x belongs to L 2 m 2 always say yes. So, therefore, m 1 also outputs yes because whenever x belongs to L 1 m 1 always outputs yes. Similarly, if x does not belong to L 1 suppose x does not belong to L 1 in such a case f x also does not belong to m 2. Since f x does not belong to L 2 m 2 says that no whenever m 2 says no m 1 also says no therefore, m 1 outputs no. So, therefore, whenever x belongs to L 1 m 1 outputs yes and whenever x does not belong to L 1 m 1 outputs no. Therefore, clearly m 1 is an algorithm and m 1 decides L 1. So, therefore, L 1 is a decidable language assuming that L 2 is decidable. 
So, from this clearly we can say that now as a corollary if L 1 reduces to L 2 and L 1 is undecidable then so is L 2, L 2 must also be undecidable. So, you can use the same concept suppose we can use it I mean we can prove it by a contradiction suppose that L 2 is decidable. Then we have m 2 for L 2 and always say yes or no on some input and then we can use the Turing machine m f which computes f. So, given any string x we first give it as input to m f which outputs f x. So, if x belongs to L 1 then f x belongs to L 2, if x does not belong to L 1 then f x does not belong to L 2. Now, this will f x will we use as input to m 2 and whenever m 2 says yes we say that m 1 also outputs yes and if m 2 says no then we say that m 1 also outputs no. Now, in such a case assuming that m 2 is decidable we now have an algorithm for L 1. If m 2 is decidable then so is L 1, but since L 1 is undecidable already we know that the no such Turing machine m 2 which is a decider for L 2 can exist. So, therefore, L 2 must also be undecidable. So, it is a simple corollary, corollary from the previous one. Now, you can take it as exercise to show that if L 1 is reducible to L 2 and L 2 is reducible to L 3, then L 1 is reducible to L 3. That means, it satisfies the transitivity property. Now, what you can show is that to show that a language is a language L is undecidable we reduce an already known undecidable language to L. That is how we can use this technique reducibility. That means, we can apply this reduction from L 1 to L 2 to show that L 2 is undecidable whenever if already given that L 1 is undecidable. So, L 1 is already known undecidable problem we reduce L 1 to L 2 to show that L 2 is also undecidable. So, that is how we can use this technique irreducibility to show that some problems are undecidable. Further, we can use this transitivity property to show that some more problems are undecidable. So, more undecidable languages can be shown to be undecidable by using this transitive property through reduction. Now, to prove that a problem is undecidable by using reduction, we must have some already existing undecidable problem. So, we will first see one such problem which is undecidable. Let us consider the problem of membership for Turing machines. Already we have seen the membership problem for regular languages for connected languages. That means, given any string x and a language regular language L, whether or not x is a member of L. That is a membership problem for regular language. Similarly, you can define the membership problem for connected languages. 
both these two problems have been shown to be decidable in the previous lecture. We know that we can construct an algorithm that means a Turing machine is a decider to decide the corresponding languages for those membership problems. But if we now consider the membership problem of Turing machines, we can show that this membership problem of Turing machine is undecidable. So, the problem is given a Turing machine m and an input string x whether or not m accepts x. So, in this case m accepts s x means it holds on every input x. So, whenever x belongs to x, L m it says that it is yes otherwise it says no. The corresponding language is that m t m it is an encoding of all those strings m x where m is a Turing machine and x is a string and x belongs to L m. So, these are corresponding language for the membership problem of Turing machines. We also say that there is a halting problem for Turing machine because the Turing machine has to halt on each and every input. We want to show that this halting problem is undecidable. That is, there is no algorithm for MTM. Now, whenever we say that this m x within angular bracket that means, it is an encoding for the Turing machine m and x. So, we have already seen how to encode a DFA. Similarly, we can also encode any given Turing machine because the Turing machine will have a finite number of states, a finite set of symbols which is alphabet. The way we encoded the states and the symbols in case of DFA can be used in this case also. That means, if say q 1, q 2, q 3 these are all set of states for string machine, then you can use a sequence of strings that means, for q y we use 1 to the power i that means, a sequence of 1 i 1s to encode the state q y. Similarly, if we have a 1, a 2 these are all symbols of the alphabet then a i will be represented as 1 to the power i sequence of i 1s. And we know that the transition function for training machines can be represented by a quadruple that means, since we know that it is a, a q 0 some symbol a from here it can go to say some state q 1 it may be l or r or whatever. So, we can write it as q 0 0 q 1 l. So, this is the simply say q 0 a q 1 l. So, by this quadruple we can represent the corresponding transition. So, for a Turing machine we have a sequence of such transitions say this transition 1, this transition 2 and so on. So, all these transitions now can be say k transitions encoded by using a sequence of zeros and ones. So, once we have a ten sequence of zeros and ones for T 1 the way we did in case of DFA. So, T 1 and T 2 can be separated by say 3 zeros, T 2 and T 3 can be separated by 3 zeros. We can represent this left bracket by 3 zeros and so on. Eventually, we have 3 zeros at the end of this. So, in any transition say T i the symbols say q 0 a q 1 l whatever we have in T 1 the encoding for each can be separated say T i is 
q 0 a q 1 l. So, what will have q 0 will be say 1 power 1, a may be say 1 power 1. So, 1 power 1 and 1 power will be separated by say single 0 and similarly it will be separated by single 0. Then the code for q 1 it may be 1 power 2 single 0 say l may be 1 power 1 or whatever. So, therefore, this may be code for say T i and so on. So, it is transition will be separated two transition separated by three zeros or maybe say two zeros as similar to D F A and eventually when it ends it will be it will have a sequence of three zeros. So, we can use the same approach that we used in case of say D F A to encode a Turing machine and at the end of this after this we can give the corresponding sequence for the input string x. So, we have a way to represent or encode this string m x. So, the problem is when the show is that this is undecidable. Now, to show that this is undecidable that means, there is no algorithm for m t m we first give a language which is not even recursively enumerable before showing that there is a does not exist any Turing machine for this language for this language m t m which is decider we want to first show that there exists a language which is not even recursively enumerable that means, there is no any Turing machine that recognizes that language. Then we will come back to this our original problem of showing that m t m is undecidable that means, there is no decider for m t m. Now, to show that there is a language which is not even recursively en enumerable, we first encode all the Turing machines as sequences of zeros and ones. So, there will be infinite number of Turing machines. So, you can encode all these Turing machines. So, since Turing machines are sequences of zeros and ones, so the code of a Turing machine will be a member of sigma star, where sigma is equal to 0 and 1. Now, these sequences of Turing machines can be ordered using some ordering. For example, suppose if the alphabet is 0 1 since we have Turing machine codes which is a sequence of zeros and ones. So, any Turing machine code will belong to that sigma 1 star. So, any Turing machine code will belong to the sequence of sigma 1 uh, sigma star where sigma is 0 1 contains two symbols. Now, we can have an ordering of all the strings over 0 and 1s. For example, we'll say it is alphabetic ordering, considering that or you can say canonical ordering. So, where strings are ordered according to the alphabetical ordering, but the strings of shortest length will come first. That means, in this case the ordering will be say initially it will be epsilon where the string has length 0. Next string of length 1, there are only two possible cases 0 and 1. The string of length 2, we have 4 such strings and those 4 such strings will come in alphabetical order that means, 0 0, 0 1, 1 0 and 1 1. Next we will have strings of length 3 again in alphabetical order say 0 0 0, 0 0 1 and so on finally, say 1 1 1 and then strings of length 4 and so on. So, therefore, we consider say there is an canonical ordering. So, all the Turing machine codes can be ordered using this kind of canonical ordering. So, Turing machine sequences which will be ordered in canonical order. So, 
transmission M will be encoded by this M in angular bracket. And since we order this in some canonical order, so we put in the ordering say M 1 comes first, next comes M 2 and so on. Similarly, all the input strings x 1, x 2, x 3 will be ordered using some using the same canonical ordering and we put here in the sequence. So, accordingly we get a table arranging x in the column and m in the rows. Now, in this table we see the entries, we fill up the entries, we fill up the entries in such a way that the i z entry is 1 if x j belongs to L of m i. Since, we are talking about i z entry, so rho i we have the corresponding machine three machine m i and column j we have the string x j. Now, if x j is accepted by the Turing machine m i, we just fill up that entry by 1. Otherwise, if x j does not belong to L of m i, then we that corresponding entry will be 0. So, that is how we fill up all the entries. So, in this case m 1 accepts does not accept x 1. So, therefore, it is 0. Say m 1 accepts x 2 that is why it is 1. Suppose m 1 accepts x 3 it will be 1. Suppose that m 1 does not accept x 4. So, it will be 0 and so on. Say m 2 accepts x 1. So, it is 1. M 2 accepts x 2. So, it is 1. Suppose m 2 does not accept x 3 that will be 0 and so on. So, we fill up all the entries of this table according to this rule. So, please know that we have a sequence where we put all the three machine codes m 1 through m 1 m 2 and like that. Similarly, we have a sequence where we put we have ordering where we put all the strings of the sequence. Now, we consider the language. So, that language is named as L D. So, L D is a set of all strings over 0 1 star, all the strings x over 0 1 star, such that x is x i for some index i and x does not belong to L of m i. That means, all those strings all those strings x i such that x i does not belong to L of m i. That means, it contains the entries from the diagonal, because we are talking about x i does not belong to L of m i. So, we will con consider the entries from the diagonals. So, if x i does not belong to L of m i, then this is a member of the language L d that is said to be diagonal language. Once we have defined the language L d, that means, L d contains those strings x i such that i i at entry in the table is 0, because we have used this rule to show that it is 0 if x j does not belong to L of m i and we are talking about the diagonal entries. Now, we have to show that this language L d is not recursively enumerable. So, this is our claim. So, language L d is not recursively enumerable. That means, there is no Turing machine that recognizes this language L d. Now, how to show this? We assume that there is a Turing machine M that recognizes L d. That means, say M is a Turing machine that recognizes L d, L m equal to L d. So, this is for contradiction. Assuming that there exists a Turing machine M such that L d equal to L m, we arrive at a contradiction. So, if M is a Turing machine, then M must appear in the ordering that we have already said, say M 1, 
m 2 these are all Turing machine codes and so on. So, this m must also appear somewhere in the ordering say it is m k for some k that means, we identify the index of m say k such that m equal to m k. So, this m must appear in the ordering. Now, once we have found out this index k for which m equal to m k, we ask the question whether x k the corresponding string x k for that k belongs to L d or not whether x d x k is a member of L d we ask this question. Suppose, x k belongs to L d it may belong to L d in such a case according to our definition the k k -th entry in the table must be 0 that is how we have defined. If k k -th entry is 0 that is how we have defined this L d. If k k -th entry is in the table is 0 what it says the way we fill up the table it says that x k does not belong to L of m k because that is how we defined the rule over here. If it belongs to L of m i then it is 1 otherwise it is 0. So, if x k belongs to L d k k -th entry in the table is 0 it says that x k does not belong to L of m k. That means, x k does not belong to L of m for because m is the m k. Therefore, it says that x k does not belong to L d according to our definition again for L d, but there is a contradiction because we say that x k belongs to L d. Assuming that x k belongs to L d, we have added a contradiction that x k does not belong to L d. Similarly, if we assume that x does not belong to L d, we again arrive at a contradiction because if x does not belong to L d, k k -th entry must be equal to 1 according to the definition of language L d. If that is the case, if k k -th entry equal to 1, then according to our rule that we used to fill up the table entries, we know that x k does x k belongs to L of m k. That means, x belongs to L of m, but according to again the definition of L d we know that x k now belongs to L d again a contradiction. So, in both cases whether x belongs to L d or x k belongs to L d or x k does not belong to L d we arrive at a contradiction always. Therefore, such a machine Turing machine m recognizing L d cannot be there does not exist. Okay. Such a Turing machine M accepting L d or recognizing L d does not exist. So, this must be the case that means, our original assumption of such a Turing machine to recognize M must be wrong. Therefore, L d is not recursive in your since there is no Turing machine recognizing L d, L d must be not recursive any variable. Now, we use this language L d which is not recursive in enumerable is already shown to establish that the halting problem is undecidable. We have again come back to the our original problem of showing that halting problem is undecidable. For that we will be using this diagonal language L d. Now, we assume that for contradiction the halting problem is the halting problem m t m is decidable. So, that we have assumed for contradiction. So, since m t m is decidable there must be an algorithm say it is a h that decides m t m. So, for contradiction we have assumed that halting problem is decidable. So, therefore, we must have an algorithm that decides m t m and that algorithm is a h. So, that means, if a h is the algorithm given any input string m and x encoded where m is a Turing machine and x is a string, a h will always say yes 
if x belongs to L m and a h will always say no if x does not belong to L m. So, in algorithm it will always have an yes and no answer. If m accepts x it will say yes, if m does not accept x it will say no. So, this is the algorithm for h. Now, we use h to construct an algorithm that x x and uh, that decides the complement of the language L D, L D complement. So, if complement of the language L D is decidable because we have we, we can construct an algorithm, then so, since we have an algorithm for complement of L D, that means L D complement is must be decidable. If L D complement is decidable, this implies that L D must also be decidable because the decidable language are closed under complement. Because if we have an algorithm for a language, then its complement can also be decided just by complementing or reversing the output. But I have already shown that L D is not even recursively enumerable. Therefore, our original assumption that such an algorithm H exists to decide MTM is wrong. That means, since we have arrived at a contradiction, our original assumption that such an H exists to decide MTM must be wrong. Now, let us see the algorithm for complement of LD to decide the complement of language L D by using the algorithm for M T M. So, this is A H algorithm for the halting problem given any input say M K X K encoding of a Turing machine and X K it will always say yes or no depending on whether x k belongs to m k, it will say yes. If x k does not belong to m k, it will say no. Now, the algorithm for L D complement is m. We use in m this algorithm A h. m takes a string x as input, then it uses a machine which is an index machine that finds out the index k such that x is x k in the sequence. In the sequence, we have arranged all the strings in some order which is called say canonical order. So, what the index k will be decided by this index machine and that is always possible, a Turing machine can always do that. Once it has found out this index k, there is a constructor Turing machine that constructs the sequence m k and x k. That is also always possible if we know the index k was a corresponding Turing machine for that k m k and the string x k. So, this will be given this will be out, given as output this will be an output for c and this output will be used as input to the Turing machine with an algorithm say A h and whenever A h say yes, m also says yes, whenever A h says no, m also says no. Now, suppose that this m says yes on x. So, when says m when m says yes on x we know that x is x k, it must belong to L of m k, because A h says yes whenever x k belongs to L of m k. That means, k k entry is 1. So, x belongs to x k belongs to L of m k if and only if k k entry is 1. If and only if x belongs to L d complement. So, that is our definition of L d complement. Similarly, m says no on x on the string x, 
if and only if x k does not belong to L of m k. So, this m will say no if and only if this m k x k entry is rejected by H that means, x k does not belong to L of m k if and only if k k th entry is 0 and by definition if and only if this x k or x does not belong to L d complement. So, therefore, we have whenever say given an input x to this machine m will always have yes or no answer depending on whether m ha x belongs to L d complement or x does not belong to L d complement. So, therefore, this is clearly an algorithm for L d complement. So, since Now, now we, we know that we have an algorithm for L d complement, but we already know that since we have an algorithm for L d complement, we have also an algorithm for L d because the is closed under complement, but we know that L d is not even recursively enumerable. Therefore, our original assumption that such an algorithm H exists for deciding the halting problem is wrong. So, no such algorithm exists to decide this halting problem. Therefore, we have proved our original claim that halting problem is undecidable. Now, given any other problem which is undecidable, we can reduce this halting problem to that problem to show that the given problem is also undecidable. Now, consider the following problem for a given Turing machine. So, m is a Turing machine, we consider the following problem. So, whether or not L m is empty, the language accepted by the Turing machine is empty, whether or not the language accepted by m is finite, whether or not L m is recursive or is L m regular or whether the language accepted by the Turing machine is context free. We want to know whether these problems are decidable or not. The corresponding language problem the language for those problems can be written as say, E T M emptiness for Turing machines. Set of all those encodings of Turing machines such, such that L m is phi. Similarly, finiteness set of all those Turing machines say M such that L m is finite. Similarly, recursive so set of all Turing machines M L m is recursive or say L m is context free that way you can find out or denote the corresponding languages. We can show that all these problems are basically undecidable. To show that these problems are undecidable we need to reduce each and every problem or, or I mean we, we, we can reduce halting problem to each and every problem. Since, halting problem is already undecidable, these problems are also undecidable. Now, instead of giving separate reductions for each of these problems, what you can do, do is that we will give a general theorem. That the, using that theorem, we can show that each and every problem is that we have already stated, these are all undecidable. Now, this general theorem is said to be your Rice's theorem. So, what it says is that a property that describes a proper subs subset of recursively enumerable languages in undecidable. That property, it may be any property like say uh, it is finite, finiteness or emptiness or whether it is regular, recursive, these are all properties. The set 
which subset from say sigma star is a recursively invariable language, we say that there is a property, a property and there is a proper subset only the emptiness and the whole set these are not proper subsets and uh, these are decidable. In the sense that suppose we consider uh, the, the whole set, J just take the example, suppose in a university uh, there, there are some faculties, lots of faculties we have and there suppose there is only one department say this computer science department. Now, if we ask the question given a faculty, say there is a faculty, here is a faculty whether he belongs to whether it is a computer science faculty. So, this is quite obvious because the we are considering a whole set, the set of faculties and there is only one department. So, it is quite obvious that the faculty must be from computer science department. Similarly, if you do not give any then that is also obvious there is an emptiness. Other than that any other set is a proper subset of recursively remembered language and we can show that a property that describes a proper subset of recursively numerical language is undecidable. That means, say P be a property that describes a proper subset of recursive language, say S is a property, a set of all languages L such that L is recursively enumerable that satisfies P. So, that is how we this set represents the property. such that as a proper subset of all recursively enumerable languages. Now, we write the language for S like this. So, this is L S, the set of all Turing machines such that L M satisfies P, M is a Turing machine. So, M is a Turing machine and L M satisfies P. So, what we want to show is that this language L s is undecidable, this is a proper subset and this satisfies this for, uh, for, for all those every Turing machine m satisfies this, this, this L m satisfies this property whatever we describe say that language is recursive or that language is regular or that language of is Turing machine and like that. And we know that these are must always be a proper subset. For example, say emptiness. There are many Turing machines. Some might accept empty language, and many Turing machines which may not accept empty language. So therefore, we consider all those Turing machines. Some accept empty language, and some do not accept empty language. So therefore, that set is basically a proper subset of recursively enumerated languages. So, we want to show that this language L s is undecidable. If you can show that this language L s is undecidable, so any property related to recursively enumerable languages will be undecidable. Any property means it must be say subset of proper subset of recursively enumerable languages. So, we will consider this proof in the next lecture.